What is up, podcast? Welcome back to another episode of Paradise on Fire. Melissa is apparently cold right now. Just put a scarf on, so she's wearing her bougie Hermes. Hermes. This is a forty-five hundred dollar her Hermes scarf from Hermes from from (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I have to tell this story, or else people are going to think I'm crazy. We uh. We're quarantining right now, obviously, Ian and I. And yesterday, a package... No, it was in the mailbox. There was a package in the mailbox addressed to Ian. Wait, did it have postage on it? Or was it just like like someone paid for it or just put it there themselves? No, no, there was postage. Yeah, Yeah, there was like... From China. China. There was Chinese writing on it. Okay. And I brought it in and I was like... It's addressed. Oh, I thought it was Amazon Prime. I'm like, it's addressed to you. And he was like, what the fuck? I and thought it was my shirt. He's like, oh, yeah, I ordered a Chicago Bulls shirt. Open it up. And there's like these like tassels. And there's a Hermes tag. And he's like, what the fuck? And pulls it out. And it's like this like piece of felt, like literally a cut piece of felt from the craft store with a price tag on it that's $4,500 and saying that it's genuine Hermes scarf. But the billing, the bill said it was But the bill says it was $15. And Ian did not order this. He, his credit card was not charged for it. So we have no idea. I think some random fan found his address and sent him a... It was, it was in Ian's name, like sent to his name? Yeah, and our address and everything. Is, was the bill on it like a receipt or just the it's custom like an in, form? Like an, an invoice. The custom it could have been. It, it could have been. So like if you sent international, he has to just put a value on it. He could have actually just put $15, but it could be a $4,500 scarf. Okay, if you were here touching this, <laughs> you would know that this is like a literal cut piece of felt. Like You don't know those brands. Sometimes that's what they are. Oh my God, I would, uh, I, I, if this is real and I would, I would be severely appalled by this. Like and some of those like high beast brands with like $500 hoodies are just guilds and hoodies. Uh, this is different. This is like, <laughs> this would be cashmere if it was $4,500. You okay. know what I mean? But no, that was, that was our excitement for yesterday. So has, we were he, has he been wearing around the house? He wore, he put it on and I hate. I shouldn't. I hate when men wear scarves like that. I find it so pretentious. What about Calvin? <laughs> Calvin, I love you. Calvin, I feel okay. Maybe I should say Ugh. some men can definitely pull it off, but like when Ian dresses like that, I'm like, no, it doesn't suit you. It just looks pretentious. Well, Calvin there's a very wearing... different style between like kind of manly, just like wear like a big jacket and just chill versus like the guys who wear like the skinny trench coat like with the suit every day fucking well yeah and if happy. you have if you have to wear a suit to work obviously your accessories when you're like dressing up for cold weather are going to be different but like i still like a more casual look all the calvin time. calvin with a scarf is like the asian harry potter with his glasses, <laughs> with his fake glasses, yeah. <laughs> his glasses are fake. They're yeah, they're just clear lens. You're kidding. Yeah, I got them for him. They're movement. He wears so them all the time. Uh, yeah, he does, he has tan lines from wearing them every day. <laughs> wow, I thought he needed glasses. No, he he'll like he'll be like, where are my glasses? I need my glasses. I'm like they're not real. <laughs> I don't know. He thinks they are now. Uh, probably like, he probably yeah. helps him see now. <laughs> or they, they're the blue light ones right i don't even think they are i think they're just clear lens oh, oh they're just like swag only they're just fashion yeah oh well. that's what you should talk about this episode fashion <laughs> <laughs> most of fashion ideas <laughs> what the hell <laughs> We were sitting on the beginning of this podcast, like, what the fuck do we talk about? And we still don't know what we're talking about. We're just like silently staring at each other. (laughs) We just just turned it on, hoping something magically comes up. So we got a couple more minutes to figure that out. I had a scarf, okay. (laughs) (laughs) We killed five minutes. We have 45 more to go. (laughs) Oh, God, I'm crying. All right, Matt, you want to start with your peach and pit? Yeah, I'll go. Uh, I would say my peach this week was, uh, mine's kind of a little little weird backstory. You guys know it. I don't know if everybody else knows, but not weird, but uh, my brother and sister-in-law 
had their anniversary this, I guess, weekend or something. So they never really had a real wedding or anything. So kind of just had like a small group of people, family and stuff that were like, had a outside backyard type of thing party for them. So it's kind of nice just to see them and have everybody together for a little bit with everything going on and all that other stuff. But uh, no, it was just fun. Had, again, a lot of cookies I could not stop. Uh, probably had 10 in an hour. It was bad. Was this before or after that picture you posted on Instagram? Yeah, I was going to say you're still... That was, all right, that was before. So... <laughs> probably still looked the exact same. I, I Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like I... I don't know if I have <laughs> yeah, digest- like- I feel like I have digestive issues that have, like, started or something. But, like, it wasn't... It was, like, before that. So I don't know if, like, some... I feel like I get leaner at night. I don't know if you're the same. I get... Like, I get more veiny at night if I go lay down for a little bit, and then I get up after, like, an hour. I don't know why. I just get, like, super veiny and everything like that when I'm leaner. Not, I get kind of in my off-season. If I, like, trained and it's late in the day and I'm not, like, feeling fat, I look leaner at night. I, it's, I, I feel like I'm bloated the entire day, and then at night, right before I go to sleep, is the only time I can be like, oh, I can go take a picture. In the morning, I'm just flat, so I hate it. <laughs> yeah, but that's because I feel like you starve yourself. Yeah, but I'm eating still, like, right now, I'm, like, probably 35 to 4,000 calories, 100. 100. Is that a lot? I mean, Quite it's a not- bit to be looking that lean. I was going to say, Ian says it's a lot, so. To look that lean, it is. Yeah. I mean, I, maybe the lowest I got when I was, like, semi-dieting was probably, like, 2,700. But that was just with cardio in every day, six days a week, which isn't terrible. I mean, I wasn't starving myself. You just have a nice metabolism. Yeah, but I also have a shitty chest, shitty legs, no cap. <laughs> <laughs> Pulls out the list, fucking bullshit. Uh, oh, you sound like the people of Instagram. It is, oh, I like to, I know what I don't have, but it's basically everything. <laughs> <laughs> he is the people of Instagram. Yeah. So, uh, but I'd say my pit this week is. I mean, it's been a pretty decent week. I'd just say the only thing is probably today is September 11th. We're recording it on September 11th. So definitely still kind of one of those weird days. Um, kind of always is ingrained in your mind of what happened. So I'd say that's definitely still a pit this week. Mm-hmm. What about you, Chris? Oh, boy, I don't know. My pit is probably that I've been trying to get this signature series of line of supplements with jack factory we're like making and we've been trying to plan my protein we got my pre-workout and everything done and the protein flavor like took forever to find a good one and finally did sent it in and it turns out that it was a concentrate not an isolate protein and they were like oh we saw you wanted to concentrate the manufacturer so we're like fuck had to restart that and they sent me a bunch more and they all just tasted like the exact same vanilla and i didn't want it vanilla so it's just taking forever and the goal was to have it come out at the beginning of my prep and have it like be something I take for my whole prep and that be part of the fun of it. But obviously now it's going to take another like probably a couple of months because we still don't even have the flavor decided for the protein. So that happened yesterday, I guess, where they sent me samples and they were still shitty. So that pissed me off or annoyed me, frustrated me. But that's that. Peach. How many samples <laughs> did you get? What? Was it like a bunch of samples and they all tasted the same or you just said they all tasted bad? They all just tasted like vanilla. Yeah, like yeah. Different kinds of vanilla. And the flavor I asked for wasn't vanilla. It's like vanilla base. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. Um, my peach is a secret that <laughs> <laughs> I can't say. So. But the peach oh, can also can be going pit next week. Yeah, you can say it. You just don't want to. I just don't want to, yeah. <laughs> what did Ian say? Can you hear Ian? I just hear something. He's in the background. He's like, do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> do it for the view. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, not yet, not yet. Uh, any any hint of what it is? No, just something exciting is coming for me, at least. When is it happening? Uh, maybe next week. <laughs> what are you singing? <laughs> what do you say? I wish I could say the joke, but I can't. I'll what, tell you. what is it? I'll tell you later. I can't say it because it'll give it away. Oh shit! I'll tell you later. 
Everyone's gonna be like, fuck, the podcast sucks. We don't even know what's going on. <laughs> I know. It could be so much better. Well, maybe we'll in the next episode, we'll if I say it, we'll say the joke too. I'll, I'll sing the joke. Mm-hmm. You can just say it and then I'll just start singing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah, that's all I got though. Uh, that's you're up. Yeah. Um my pit. <laughs> Is that I have a rash. (laughs) (laughs) Do I want to be hearing this right now? Where's your rash? Uh, Sorry. No, I woke up yesterday with like a a rash on my chest. And I was like, what the fuck is that? And at first I thought it would have been from maybe like the sun and the heat in, in Tampa. But like, why would it start yesterday? So I was like, oh, it'll probably be gone by this morning. And then I woke up this morning and it's worse. And it's just like a bunch of like little white dots all over my chest. And like, no, (laughs) and then it's going back onto my shoulders. And I swear there's like two on my forehead. So I'm like, from the scarf. (laughs) (laughs) The scarf, is that what you said? Yeah. Someone's poisoning me. Someone might have, someone might have act like, you don't know where that came from. Someone might be like sabotaging you. Oh my God. Maybe it's fucking... I'm not going to say his name, but oh, someone who, no. who guys who was calling out Ian in the comments is trying to kill him now. <laughs> it's Milos. <laughs> it's Milos. <laughs> oh, no. So that's, I know that's kind of stupid, but I, I like really get bothered when my skin is fucked up. Like it really, really bothers me. So, um, I mean, it's probably diet because I feel like every time I eat like a lot of sugar, something like this happens. So I guess I should stop eating sugar. <laughs> what did you what did you eat that had a lot of sugar in it are you kidding <laughs> uh, when we came back from tampa we went to okay no you need to cut that out because i can't say that um when we came back from tampa we had like a bunch of junk food and uh There was like popcorn, peanut M&Ms, chocolate covered almonds, like all those like kind of movie things. And we put on Mulan to watch Mulan and eat junk food. And um, I don't even know what happened. We ate junk food and fell asleep. And that's the night that I woke up the next day and Ian had just like eaten everything. (laughs) Like how much is everything? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Like... 20 chocolate bars? Like No, no. We didn't have 20 chocolate bars in the house, but like <laughs> 13. <laughs> no, like the big like share it bag of peanut M&Ms and then there was a smaller bag of peanut butter M&Ms and two bags of popcorn. It's not that oh, bad. and as he's saying in the back a caramel Kit Kat and a tub of ice cream. Tub? <laughs> just keeps going. <laughs> And, and. He, he's in the background just like and this and this <laughs> oh and he had five bowls of cereal so a box of cereal yeah yeah basically is the box gone babe it was apple cinnamon cheerios so it wasn't really that bad for you but i feel like cereal it doesn't count like unless you have at least like half the box as one serving like i wouldn't ever have really any less i mean yeah for you guys I haven't had cereal in like two years, I feel like. Really? I feel like cereal's your favorite. I love I haven't eaten anything. Like, I haven't bu- had junk food in my house other than muffins in like a year. You had cookies in your freezer that I took. For the but longest you, time. They were there for three years. <laughs> they, they were there for 20, two years, 2018. I yeah, then I, them. and then I took them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but no, then I got the next day when we were like, okay, it's done. Like, we had whatever two days and now it's done i got a shipment of kai kai cookies which are like the best cookies in the world and i ate i don't know four big cookies and then that's when i woke up the next day and had like bumps all over me and i was like okay you've had like six days in a row of sugar and your body is now pissed off so i need to clean it up so my skin goes back to normal and that happened happened before really shitty your skin breaks out um it's happened before on my tummy like i've gotten like white they look like tiny little white heads almost that you can like pop off the surface and i've had it on my stomach before but i've never had it on my chest and it's like there's a lot i'm 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 kind of i don't know that's also just a guess that that's what it is i feel like it, it definitely is. could be 
he, like heat related from because we li- the day before we flew we lied out in extremely like hot sun for I don't know an hour but whatever it'll go away um I've always learned that if you just ignore it it always goes away <laughs> that, that is like the worst advice ever <laughs> that's bad for medical conditions but I feel like I honestly for this I need to stop like touching it and just don't moisturize and just like see if it clears up and if it doesn't I'll obviously call my doctor but I'm sure it'll be fine um my peach is I think um Last week we talked about like how Ian was having a really hard time kind of like celebrating his win because of the negativity on social media. And um, I mean, it's not really common for you to see someone be like super vulnerable about that and to actually talk about those feelings and to, I mean, cry on camera and basically talk about not the things that aren't so shiny and um Honestly, the response that he got from sharing and that not just from people being like, thank you so much for sharing, like it means a lot, but from the actual people that were doing kind of the damaging comments before was really fascinating to me because I was like, wow, like by you putting yourself out there, the people, yeah, I will. (laughs) Would you like to come? Um. But (laughs) by you saying how you're feeling and how you're being affected, I find the people that were maybe making you feel that way can understand more. And I guarantee you, they didn't realize that the, the impact that they would have based on their actions. So Ian actually got, I mean, he got messages from people like Flex Lewis and like John De La Rosa and like very high level, high level bodybuilders that are saying basically they've been through the exact same thing but he actually ended up getting a lot, a, like a long skew of voice notes from Milos. And he was basically like, he sent a screenshot and Max had texted Milos and was like, man, like you've really upset Ian. And like, I don't really like how this has gone. And I think you should probably reach out to him because I don't like that. I don't like the way that this has kind of played out. And like, you've heard his feelings and like, uh, like, Max is a competitor like he knows how it feels too you know what I mean so Milos ended up sending Ian like a lot of voice notes and I feel like it's just I don't know it just goes to show that if you actually have the courage to share and to kind of put yourself out there that people can maybe understand you on a more human level and at the end of the day I truly do believe that people are good I think sometimes with social media and being behind a camera or like a keyboard, whatever you want to say, it's easy to like forget that these are people with real feelings. You can just say something really quick. You're angry. You just type it out and send it and you don't think about the impact. So I think that was really cool to see. And I think it just hopefully will promote more of the sharing and the putting yourself out there especially for Ian because like this is not something that's normal for Ian in any means like I feel like before this year he didn't really talk about struggles he just kind of put his head down and went back to work and obviously him acknowledging and sharing those things this year have allowed him to change at a very drastic rate from being low to now being so high. And it's not only showing in his mental attitude and his happiness, but also in his body. And I think it's really important to like acknowledge that that's happening and kind of learn from it and hopefully share. So people know that the more that you let it out, the better that you can feel. I don't know if that makes sense. I feel like I'm rambling, but <laughs> no, it all makes sense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But, and like, it's, you don't really expect people to like take things back. You know what I mean? You almost expect the battle to continue. And if you actually just like let your guard down and kind of come from a more, let's be serious. When we, when we say mean things or we say defensive things, it's normally because we're hurt. It's not really because we're angry. It's a lot easier or I don't know, more like 
innate to be angry and to stay strong looking. But as soon as you kind of like take it back and show your feelings and actually say like, that hurt. Like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, well, fuck you. You, you're like this too. Like if you actually are like, well, shit, that hurt. Most people aren't going to keep beating you down. (laughs) So I, I think it's like a, I don't know. It was, it was very interesting to see and to analyze a little bit. I mean, you said hopefully this causes more people or more opportunity for maybe Ian and everyone to be vulnerable about how they feel and shit, but it should also, more importantly, the movement should be in the people just stop being assholes in the first place, you know? But that's a much difficult, more longer road to go down. Well, yeah, and hopefully over time, but like you need to focus on what you can control. And like, I can't control for people being assholes on the internet. Ian can't control for someone losing their temper and saying something inappropriate, you know what I mean? But you can control how you react. And if you're going to react coming from a place of vulnerability and that all of a sudden shuts it down, you'll learn over time to stop being aggressive. Like you don't need to be aggressive back because that's just going to fuel this fire, especially, I mean, listen, trolls will be trolls. And I think it's easy to tell when someone is actually just like nobody trying to bait you for their own entertainment, but it's more about like the people that actually matter and that you, that their opinions, like he values Milos's opinion. Let's be serious. That's why it hurts so bad. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. And I think also like just for the people that come in here and say like, how do these guys, you know, see these comments and respond to this and that, like, just like brush it off. Like, to those people, I almost want to say, like, you guys have all of whoever was involved has some sort of following, right? So if you have 200,000 people or whatever that see all these things and comments on this, that person who says, like, oh, don't let it bother you in some cases, like, they'll never know what that feels like to have just a thousand people coming at you and attacking you. So I don't think it's fair for someone to say, like, oh, you know, just brush it off. It's that easy and this and that when they'll never be in that position to even know what that feels like. So I think it's just like, it's, it's not fair to say something like that to whether it was Ian or Milos or Max or whomever to just brush it off, you know? So I think it's, it's tough on that situation though. Yeah. It's one thing to get like one or two or three people, but if you get like hundreds of messages and comments and like stuff coming in because there are hundreds of thousands of eyes on you, like, obviously fucking way different <laughs> yeah it's, it's just a way bigger scale that you didn't have to deal with and i mean now like you said now everyone's kind of just taking ownership and of what they said and you know they are taking responsibility and are sorry for that so I, like that's what i'm glad to see from that mm-hmm. aspect and i think that's what matters most i mean the outside people don't really matter you know mm-hmm. what i mean as far as whatever anyone else is saying and like you said trolls are going to be trolls and usually the troll is the one who doesn't have a picture of themselves or anything like that so it's not worth their time. And like you said, if those guys can, you know, patch it out, bodybuilding at the end of the day is a camaraderie. I always think just because you guys are going through the same struggles with dieting and the same mental game and everything else. So you guys are, you guys are the only ones that truly do know what goes into it and how much you do have to suffer. So I think staying together is what's best for the sport at the same time. Well, and it's funny because at the end of the day, it's never really the athletes that are like no, going no. against each other because there is so much empathy. Like you can't not like you would never want to look at someone that went through the same shit you have for the last however many years and have been working so hard and you know what goes into it and be like, oh, you don't deserve that because you understand. And I think like Milos got there eventually, but like it was a, it was a while ago for him. So I think he just needed like, and it was Max that kind of was like, yo man, like, so, and Milos did see Ian on Fuads and he, he, he basically was like, on a human level, seeing you hurting hurts me. He's like, I'm, I'm like, it hurts me. So it's, again, it's just like. Well, so I think that human level's just been lost. Like you said, you just sit behind this computer and you type out X, Y, and Z. And you, because you can't see their initial reaction or anything like that of a facial expression, like, I mean, 
nonverbal communication is like the number one thing you would look for, right? So if you see someone behind a computer, or you don't see someone behind the computer, you have no idea now what's going through their mind, how that now just affected, you know, their entire mindset, their day, everything else. So, you know, that human level is definitely lost. In, in yeah, time. there's there's no consequence, you know what no. I mean? Like, and let's be serious, half these things that are being said, I mean, probably more than half, you're not going to say to somebody's face ever. No. No. Like, people aren't monsters. You're not going to go up to someone and look them in the eye and say something like that. So it's kind of like, if you wouldn't say it to someone's face, just don't type it. Like it's, it's the same thing. When we read something that you wrote to us, it basically feels like someone's saying it to our face. So don't do it. Yeah. I feel like I had something else to say. Oh, when you're saying that people are saying like, just brush it off. I think it's like, it's important to say that like, and like Ian has said it, like he doesn't, he wishes that he did just brush it off 100%. It's not like, oh, I'm going to make an excuse because I, he hurt my feelings. So I retaliated. That's not what it was. But when people are so simple to be like, I think he should just brush it off. It's not, it's not as easy as that. No. We, we react and then sometimes we regret, but like, there's, it's more complicated. And I think it's also a learning process. And this, this one was also like, it was rough. Let's be serious. But even like that, like if you were to say like to the person on the internet, imagine if it's like someone, like you said, someone who you really looked up to all this time, like you've been bodybuilding now for 10 years. And all of a sudden you get into this spat with this person who you looked up to. Mm -hmm. If that was you in another situation, whether you're, say you played the guitar and you're talking to, I don't know, whoever's really good at guitar, you know, you're going to, you're going to feel like, you know, so let down that this person is speaking to you like that. So just because they see it as like, oh, he's just, they're just bodybuilders and this and that, they're emotional, whatever. Like, look at it from your perspective, if it was something that you love doing and that was got you, you know? And like people are sensitive. That's part of being humans. Yeah. We're lucky that we're sensitive. We have emotions. Like it's not something to be like, you're just being sensitive. Like, <laughs> like fuck you. Like, I don't know. You also, on the computer, like you said, the person being hurt only shows what they want to show. Mm -hmm. And typically they don't want to show they want to be hurt. They're, they don't want to show their hurt. But when they don't show their hurt, people will t tend to push more, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, well, he's coming back. He's obviously not upset if he's defending himself. Like, let's fucking come at him again. Like when, that, like, yeah. it's just, that's the easier, I don't know. It's, and I feel like that's kind of a reason I've gotten a lot of support on the internet. It's because I never push back. And I show up when I'm older, and if something hurts me, I'm just like, I'll say, I'll be the first one to always say it. And then yeah. people are like, okay, well, he, he just said it. I'm not going to fucking poke him for that, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, usually, I mean, the only way they really get it, uh, a troll or some sense is kind of just making the joke back at them or flipping the situation or not responding. But like you said, it, it gets to the point where when someone, when you have on that scale of a thousand people coming at you, like you do in your mind want to defend yourself in some kind of way. I mean, that's just like you said, a human response. Yeah. Clap back. Yeah. Boys and bitches. What? <laughs> the point is, you just said don't clap back. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm the bearer. He literally man. said, like, "Do as I say, not as I do," or yeah. the other way around. Do they do, not as I say. Yeah. <laughs> what? That was backwards. Exactly. Okay. Christopher's a different breed. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm the op I'm just a normal breed. Yeah. How are you doing? How's how does it feel being 260 pounds and lean? I wouldn't just use the word lean, but for oh, me, come least, on. I mean, I, th I think we can say lean. It's definitely the best I felt at this weight. And I don't know why I haven't really been doing any cardio or anything. I've just been training really fucking hard and long and eating healthy. And when like you, when you say like the best you've ever felt, are you talking about like comfort being that heavy or like your, your joints? Like, what is it? Everything. I don't have any injuries. None of my joints hurts. My knees don't, don't hurt. I don't feel that tight anywhere. I sleep good. I'm not out of breath when I walk around. I'm not breathing heavy. I just like feel like I did when I was like 245, but I'm 15 pounds heavier, which is weird. Do you think you like the quarantine, do you think like the, I don't know if you have like a new appreciation for the gym now that you can go to the gym and everything else. Do you think that definitely helps like your training? 
I don't think it was that for me. I think there was a while at the beginning of quarantine where I was just scared in general because of my health and shit. And I think maybe the quarantine helped me understand that better and just say, fuck it. Like what's going to happen, what's going to come will come. Like you can't live in fear. And I just kind of like let that go. And if it comes, I'll be prepared to, and I'll have to deal with it. But right now I'm not going to hold back from that fear. And I think I just kind of got over that. And then when I got that around the same time, I got back into a real gym and it was just like pure motivation to just like train hard and fucking go for it. And, and like letting go of the fear, like allowed you to actually start to try a hundred percent. Yeah. Like I was afraid to eat too much. I was afraid to train too many times a week because we caught too much stress. So I was afraid to be too heavy. My blood pressure went up or like whatever. And then, but it was like, I knew I could manage all that stuff if I just did it properly. I was just afraid to, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Because you're afraid, were you, I don't know if you were losing, were you losing passion for like bodybuilding? And does it feel like you're like back in college lifting again almost? A little bit, yeah. I was actually, yeah, I would say a lot. Cause like the other, the last three leg days I've had have been three hours. I've been in the gym for three hours, which is exactly what I did when my legs were fucking huge back in the day. Just go and squat five plates, do walking lunges with the bar, and then like all the machines, leg press, and just kill myself and crawl for the next week. So definitely feels good. It's kind of fucked up when you think about like your mind, you know what I mean? And how if you actually are there and you're happy to be there, that like, you have so much more like stamina and intensity and it's just like you you like it's actually fucked when you think about it because I've been listen I'm not in really great shape right now by any means like but there's like there's like a drive like a like an animalistic drive that's like almost like pushing me to like be better than when I was in prime shape it's very strange it's that's like the biggest thing I feel like I've learned from all this is like how powerful your mind is in everything like i'm actually this is gonna sound like fucking hippie bullshit but i'm starting to become of the mindset that like with my brain i can control along with other health factors but i can control my autoimmune that being at bay like i feel like with like the way i think about things and approach things mentally i can keep that at bay like i am starting to believe that in a sense yeah but don't you think it's doctor shit but don't you think it's more ignorant to think that that's impossible for something that people literally know nothing about? Maybe, but I was always that ignorant guy with like, it's fucking stupid, you know? Yeah, I feel like you, when, when you're dealing with something like autoimmune, which is like, let's be serious, there's not really very much scientific-based answers for things like this, for causes and for triggers and for like cures. There's not, there's, there's basically nothing concrete. I feel like, you can't be of that mindset and be like, well, fuck that. That's, that sounds hippie. So it's not going to work. Like you yeah. almost have to let go of the ignorance because you don't know. For, I, and I've like looked into a lot of stories of this shit and like doctors who have like been denounced as a doctor because of they start diving into this realm. And, mm-hmm. But they do like case studies on people who are like sick and like have cancer or like random shit. And the ones who like go into the deep dive of depression and like pity themselves and feel like they have no control and it's not everything's happening to them and not for them. And they have like, it's just, they can't do anything about it. They get sicker and sicker and sicker. And then some people of course just get sick, but on the other side of it, the people who are like, fuck this, I can take control of this. I can still live a good life, do the best I can be positive and shit. Those are the people who are more likely to get healthy in those situations. Mm -hmm. And it's just like crazy to see what your mind can do. And on a smaller level of that, like you were saying with your training, like in the past few years, your training has been shit to none, essentially. (laughs) And now finally you're believing in yourself, you're excited to do it and you're happy. And while you might not even have been in the gym for very long or anything, you're just like getting stronger. You feel strong, you feel good doing it all and like energized and everything, even though you haven't really like not that i mean a lot's changed now but at the beginning you were just like fired up ready to go doing it every day yeah but at the beginning like nothing had changed but like that changed and that's what allowed my body to change you know what i mean yeah it's kind of crazy and like i don't know it's i i i didn't i i feel like i didn't have control of my mind like for the last whatever year and a bit but the more that i'm like sitting here and like analyzing and kind of thinking like i probably did you know 
When, when did that mindset with you change? Like just recently? Oh, probably like, I mean, probably watching Ian over the last do you, four weeks. Do you remember when I said something like that? Well, you said you control your happiness. And I, I looked said, at you. And, you, and you're like, no, you don't. I was like, you don't. Yeah. yeah. But to be honest. That, I, 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 that moment stuck with me. I was like, <laughs> she's well, got to change that. Yeah, because that's a very different like that's a very different mindset than I've had for the rest of my life. Right. But over the last, like probably four weeks, and it, honestly, a lot of it has been like living through this with Ian mm -hmm. and seeing how quickly he was able to bounce back from something that was very traumatic. I was just like, you, you do really have, you have to believe that you have control to have control, but mm -hmm. you do, you know what I mean? Sometimes you need help. I'll like, I'm of not going to, you know, but but if you have that belief that you can be better and that you will, I think it just comes. Even with that help from people, you need to believe that help will help you. And that's still your choice to take that help. Yeah. And it still all starts with you making the, your own choices. Mm -hmm. 100%. Now, like with you for your prep, Chris, do you think, I mean, I know like going into this one, I feel like your mindset's definitely a lot better than the previous two, just knowing like what was going on and everything else. I mean, the one before that wasn't really going in, but definitely last year, I mean, your stress was through the roof <laughs> before you even started prepping. So, I mean, just, just the stress alone and cortisol levels alone, I feel like definitely are something that would affect an autoimmune disease. Like if you think it's going to happen, it is going to happen. So like you said, whether it's happiness or that the autoimmune disease is going to pop up like tomorrow because of prep. Like, I feel like you were essentially waiting for it last time. And this one, you're kind of like you said, you're just, hey, if it happens, I'm going to work through it and this and that. Do you think that's kind of where you're at right now? That's where I'm at right now. I'm afraid I won't be able to stay like that forever. It's going to be difficult and take a lot of work. But uh, like 100%, the difference I feel compared to starting last prep is literally night and day. I was stressed out about being sick. I had just gotten hernia surgery. I felt like I was already fucked from the beginning of my prep. And I was just going into it like that. And then it, cut, it did start to come along. It did kind of start to get a little sick last year. And I felt like it because I was so stressed out and somehow I still got through it. But like my body wasn't responding very well last year. I was eating fucking 1600 calories from five and a half weeks out. I just looked at that diet the other day Ian sent me. It was like brutal. Like right now I feel like I just added another 500 calories in the last week and I got a little bit leaner which like last year was just pulling calories, more and more cardio. And I just looked the exact same pretty much until four weeks out. So I feel like your body's just kind of like, because now you're relaxed, that's why your body's kind of just soaking it all up. A hundred percent. It's just like, I'm, I'm doing this cause I want to, and I'm excited to be doing it. I'm happy to be doing it. And it's just like, like we were saying, your body responds to your mind welcoming something. But you know how you said that you're like kind of afraid, like that it's going to take a lot of work. I think, I mean, for me at least, because I mean, I don't have an autoimmune disease, but I definitely had like an extreme mental health scare and I was, I was probably depressed. I don't even, I've never been diagnosed, but I think like I would always have that fear. And every time that I had a bad day or I woke up and I wasn't in a good mood, I was like, oh my God, it's starting again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh my God, this is this is fucking happening again. And now I'm going to lose another year. Like how am I, and like, you would almost like work yourself up. And then as soon as I started, like, I think it was Ian and Ian was just like, you're going to still have a bad day. You know what I mean? And like some days you might wake up and have like anxiety and fear, but like, this is normal. Like just allowing that and acknowledging it. And then like focusing on getting back to the good instead of, instead of being so scared of getting back, to that old mindset yeah no for sure and i i used to a big thing i've been trying to understand is when it's fear talking in my head and when it's not because i used to tell myself was like in that exact comparison i'd be like yeah some people are like oh i have a bad day but like bad day they're happening i'll get over it. it's fine and i'm to me i was like well that's your mental health it's different mine is a disease i can't control it you know yeah. i'm sick it's my body shutting down it's my organs i can't stop that it's not my brain and that was it's still part of that might be slightly true, but I know looking inside of myself, that was my fear, like my ego proving my fear right and kind of well, keeping wanted, me stuck you down wanted to, You wanted to relinquish control because then you weren't responsible. You exactly. Know I mean? yeah. 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 So that's, 
like I'm obviously I'm not just like I'm over that obviously but I at least understand it now and that's how the approach I'm trying to take to look at it every day and move past it and grow from it and be better than that so trying to take that responsibility I know I have it I know it's on me I can say it out loud but that doesn't mean every single day if I wake up and my shins are like a little swollen like they were last year I'm not like <gasps> like fuck it's happening you know do like, you don't eat today fast for the next day like you, you know still press on your shins every morning not every morning but i still do sometimes yeah became a habit last oh, prep, yeah. he, last did prep was for, uh, he did it for uh, the entire like an hour after waking up every morning <laughs> yeah every, every, every like an hour the table, i'm just like yeah 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 it becomes like a nervous tick it's crazy I never even noticed until Courtney started calling me out. She'd be like, are you touching your shins again? I'd be like, no. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I mean, it's definitely, I mean, like you said, though, it's definitely like the mindset. Because I mean, I remember like for myself, like you said, from a mental standpoint, like, I mean, I have my good days and bad days and everything else, but I'm someone who's like an anxious person usually and everything. And I even remember like in March when I was like leaving canada like with all the the pandemic was first starting and everything i remember i like went to chris and he's he was like you got to make your decision are you just going to stay here you're going to go home and like my only thought of like when i was going home was i was like i'm going to go home and i'm honestly just going to be like depressed like i said to him and he's like well you can't you have to decide like for yourself like what is the best decision but i remember just getting on the plane i was like this is in my head, I was like, this is not it. I'm like literally going to go home. I'm going to be depressed for like months. And like that was besides the pandemic. It wasn't even like about the pandemic because like, I don't know why just coming back to Jersey was kind of like hard on my mental health or something. I don't know why. But uh, I mean, for those first four weeks, I probably was not the best mentally at all. Like you said, once you start kind of telling yourself, how it should or how it is or how it should be you kind of start to like we get and relax a little bit and I'm someone who's probably dealt with it a little bit more than I tell people but like you said it it gets easier when you start looking at the positives in life rather than kind of focusing on you know the negatives I guess you know yeah yeah I mean, on on that something something Courtney always started to say to me is she was always bouncing around and when she she was like when I go home I don't feel good that's and you would tell me things like when you would come visit me, you're like, my appetite's back. I feel better. Like yeah. training's better, you know, like this is so much easier. Like, and you just felt better. And then immediately because you felt better, you associated back home with worse. Yep. And then you told yourself it was worse. Something Courtney always said, I didn't really understand it, but it was like, wherever you are, there you are or something or something along those lines. Just like wherever you are is just where you are. And it's just be there. Yeah. And it doesn't like, you can't set a boundary of like, when I go home, it's going to be bad. When I do this, it's going to be bad. <clears throat> because every time you run away somewhere, yeah, you might be fun with me for a week, but then everything in your mind can still trickle back in when you're stuck there in the same place for two months. It's not so much about where you're at, but being where you are, wherever you are. Kind of. Wait, so I, I made up in my mind as soon as I, like, as soon as I left, I was going to be depressed. Like that was a hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> it was mind. game over at that point. Yeah. So like you said, I came back and my appetite was like gone for those four weeks. And then, like I said, until like I like started taking, again, I, I think there's different levels of like depression and anxiety and everything. So I'm not saying like, it's just as easy to say, oh, you got to get over it. Like I still have, like you said, those days where you're just, you wake up and it's just not your day. But, uh, you know, there, there are certain things you can do when they say like those self-care and everything and kind of getting back to like you said, things that you enjoy again and looking at not, oh, in the, in the future when I go here, I'm going to feel a certain way. And while I'm here, I'm just going to be this shitty feeling, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, there's, there's also a huge difference between because and and. And we can say, I feel like shit because I'm home, but it's actually just, I feel like shit and I'm home. Mm-hmm. And I think the human brain always is trying to look for patterns and it's always trying to look for answers. And if you're going to start to tell yourself over and over again, every time I travel, I feel good. I feel good because I'm traveling. Like, no, you, you feel good and you're traveling. And like, for me, like it was the same. I was in Tampa and I was like, Oh my God, I feel like 
I feel like I was probably dropping like literally two pounds a day. Like I was just like eating so healthy. I was going for walks. Like my neat was so, I wasn't even working out because I was helping Ian the whole time, but my neat was so high. Like everything was just flowing. And then I came home and I felt so shitty. First two days of quarantine, I was like sleeping, like tired, eating junk food. And I was like, oh, now I'm quarantined and I'm at home. And now like life's just, it's like, it sucks because I'm here. But like, it's actually because of my fucking habits and that's under my control. So like, and I, I don't even know, I think it was my old boss from Lululemon that posted this quote about the difference of in because and and. And so many times people are like, I'm like this because of this, but it's, it's not, re- it's not related. It's you're like this and this. And I think I read that and I was like, oh my God, like I can be good and be at home. Like there's no, there's no reason. There's not, it's not like I walk into my doorway and all of a sudden it's like, oh, you have to, you have to feel like shit. You have to sleep in, you have to eat the cookies. Like, come on, like, let's like give ourselves more credit than that. We know what makes us feel good. Let's just continue to do it everywhere we are. I mean, I, and I used to be the opposite. Like, you, I mean, when I used to travel, if I traveled anything, it didn't matter if it was for work, if it was for vacation. Like when I, because I'm someone who I like a routine. So mm-hmm. like when I would travel more than three days and I knew I was going to be off a routine, I would kind of go down like this dark like path of like and start overanalyzing every little detail or anything else. And it got to the point where like you said, you start relaxing and I started liking traveling for x amount of time or this or that so that was like when i came home i was like oh no like what am i gonna do like i said i think now that i started getting back i think because i'm someone who likes a routine i kind of i was in the beginning letting myself just like sleep for way too long or anything else so i'd be like no like you have to get to like if even if i went to sleep later i would still set my alarm for you know 7 a.m make sure i got up and everything else so i think like once you got your day going it kind of just it helped my mind at least a little bit to, to take some pressure off myself, you know? Well, yeah, you have to like learn the things that make you feel good. You know what I mean? And in my head, I always think about like, what are you going to be proud of? Like when you go to sleep, are you going to be proud that you woke up at 10 in the morning and like, didn't do your spin and just like lied around all day? No, I'm probably going to lie down at whatever, probably midnight. Cause I slept so late and I'm going to be anxious. I'm going to be like, what the fuck did you do all day? And like, I'm not someone that has to be hyper productive all the time that by no means am I that type of person. I feel like I'd probably be a bit more successful if I was, but if I do nothing, I will have extreme like disappointment in myself. Yeah. And now that I'm like learning that I don't want to, I don't want to feel disappointed in myself. I want to be proud of myself. It's just like, you train yourself to like, you condition yourself to do those things that make you feel good. Yeah. And I mean, and this is for like anybody who's listening. I mean, I was someone who worked in an office for five years previously. And then like you kind of, when you start working at home, so I know this is happening for like a lot of people right now. Like when you first start working from home, it has to be like one of the worst times of just, you're not seeing people every single day. You're not, you know, you're not interacting how you used to interact. So I mean, for those first, like, it, it's different for anybody, but for like first six months, year, whatever. I mean, th- those were like just hard times to not be able to express any kind of conversation with anybody on a daily basis. And, you know, just to anyone who's in that situation now, like it does get better. Like once you find your routine and you kind of do things for yourself, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you probably miss being pissed off at the annoying people yeah. in your office. The stupid dog, the lady with the candy on her desk. <laughs> Look at all MHP office. Fucking pizza every day, you fat ass. <laughs> and Regus, obviously. Regus is a beauty. I mean, I remember when my mother-in-law started working from home and she she had been in an office her entire life. And she was like, I quickly learned that I had to wake up at the same time every morning and shower and get dressed and yep. do my hair. Cause like you could, you don't have to, you could just roll out of bed, eat your breakfast and like stay in your pajamas, not even wash your face. No one would know the difference. And she was like, I have to still. And I was like, a hundred percent, like that would change, that would change the way you feel so quickly. I mean, 
the office at MHP was not was not anything great, but <laughs> but it's something. But it was, yeah, but it was something. I mean, like you said, I you it definitely have to make a point to like get up and shower. Like that's, I feel like once you shower, like that means you started your day. You know. Yeah, and set an alarm. Yeah. If you need yeah. to. Um, well, we were talking about you, Christopher, and then we started talking about mental health. Good. Take the tension off me. How much calories are you eating right now? I'm curious. <laughs> I like the last conversation better. Um, 5,300 about, I think. Oh my God. But I've only been doing that for like a week and a half, two weeks. But you said you're, you're feeling tighter. Yeah, I think so. What? I don't know. I don't feel not tighter. Well, your protein, and, your protein was pretty low. I mean, I watched like the video just to see where you're at, but your protein, you're still long. keeping pretty low. It was over a, a gram per pound or whatever, which I didn't. I'd never track my macro, so I didn't fucking know what it would be. But I think it was at like 270 grams, or about. Well said, but I, but I said it's just over a gram, maybe. So I mean, that's usually pretty typical for you. Is that a gram? Yeah, I was eating much less before. I think. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't realize how much fucking protein was gonna be coming from rice. Even that, like an oatmeal too. Like if you yeah. have like a cup of oatmeal, it's like you said eight ten grams of protein. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like four hundred grams of rice is like four, thirteen. I don't know. Over ten grams of protein. I mean, I guess I never eat like that high of carbohydrates, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't even think exactly. Of that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Like, you're gonna you know, get the you're gonna stay at protein. You're going to see your current 5,300 roughly, or you're going to go up in, for the next three weeks and try to put on more. I'm not going to go any higher than that. He doesn't have three weeks. Well, three weeks like, to like until prep. like one week. Oh, it is. Yeah. Prep is like, three weeks, two I weeks. think, well, it's two. Yeah. Depending, maybe a little under two. Yeah, no, I'm not going to go higher than that though. And then I'll, we're going to start you at 1,500 calories. Get me down to fucking <laughs> nothing. <laughs> If I can, if I can get to two weeks out before going under, or three weeks out before going under two thousand calories, I'll be so happy. Uh, last year was actually so strange looking at your diet. I remember looking at it and being like, I feel like this is what I eat before a show. Like probably, yeah. It's a cool flex to have now, though. That you because, like did it. Like a few people are like doing day in the life of me, like YouTubers and shit, or they're like asking what my diet was like. And I can be like, I ate 1500 calories. <laughs> like my rice meals were 80 grams of rice and I only had that once. Like it just sounds intense, you know? It was like a lot of zucchini, a lot of spinach. Like it was a lot of just veggies. And I'd like fry up the spinach shoes. So it was like this little. Like, yeah, it wasn't the volume. None of the volume was high though. Cause I feel like you just didn't want volume. You didn't want any, literally no calories. I had nothing, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. I think the biggest thing that like messed with my mind with yours is like I was someone who always, I mean, when you first started like bodybuilding, you would always like think, oh, you have to get like eight to 10 grams of protein or eight to 10 uh, ounces of, you know, some type of meat or whatever. And I was oh. like watching Chris in this prep and he had like two and a half, three ounces in some of them. And I was like, <laughs> that's literally like nothing when you look at a piece of chicken. Crazy, yeah. Yeah, I cut down my protein more and more over the last few years. Yeah. Did you really get into like, like, were you someone who, when you were younger, were you doing like the four or 500 grams of protein? No, I don't think so. I had like mutant mass shakes, but I ate a lot of like lasagna and like random shit. I didn't like know what I was eating when I was really young. I just ate as much you, as I could. You would only eat like 250 grams of chicken a meal though. I wouldn't even go that high. No, like 200? 220. 220. <laughs> Was what was the number. dumbest thing you followed when you first came up that you wish you didn't like bodybuilding wise was there anything i don't think i did anything dumb i don't like mutant mass was probably the dumbest one i did because i just shit my pants <laughs> it's literally the number one ingredient is beans really it's mm -hmm. like it was back in the day whatever it was it was like 1400 calories for a shake for four scoops that's disgusting and, and the number one ingredient was beans I remember going to football practice and just like shitting. And the coach <laughs> hated me. Like, no, actually you pooing. Or, in your pants? No, I would just fart. Like, and it smelled so bad. <laughs> like, so bad. And my coaches were like, Chris, what the fuck, man? Like, get out of here. Like, get I mad mean, at me. I feel like Christopher was actually like so 
like he knew what he was doing so early. Because how old were you when I met Ian? 15? Yeah. And I, like, I remember Ian came to mom and dad's house because I was having like a a pre-drink or something. And uh, he wasn't drinking. He was just like hanging out and he's like sitting at the table and he was like, oh, I should, I should go. I need to go home. And I was like, no, like you don't need to. And he was just like, yeah, I need to eat. And I was like, well, I have food. Like, what do you need? And he was like, no, like I eat very specific food. And I was like, I know I can tell, like, what do you want? I have chicken. I have rice. It's cooked in the fridge. Do you want some? And he was just like, he looked at me. He was like, what? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, at, at that age, you know what I mean? Like we were 22, you were 15. I was yeah. like, yeah, my brother like preps his food all the time and it's already cooked in the fridge. And he was just like, oh yeah, sure. And I like fed him chicken and rice. And that's like the first time that he was like at mom and dad's house. <laughs> and I'm sure I remember, I remember being in high school and I would have six hard boiled eggs in the morning and peanut butter toast. And then I would prep a chicken and two chicken and rice Tupperwares. Yeah. Like Gla- I did glass Tupperware and I'd put them in my bag and then it wouldn't, I ate too much that I couldn't only ha- eat during lunch. So one class I'd have to sit there and eat it. And like, I don't even do that shit now. <laughs> yeah. Like that's high school. Like that's yeah. not normal. I want to know what Chris's reaction was when he came home to see all his food just gone that he had prepped. <laughs> I was probably pissed. <laughs> oh, come on. You were probably like Ian Valier ate it. Oh my God. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I was probably pissed initially until I heard that. <laughs> I remember, mom, mom, I remember where's my telling chicken? my friends and showing them pictures of Ian. I'm like, yo, you should see this fucking guy my sister's dating. <laughs> I'm pulling up pictures of him from whatever show he had done previously or whatever. Oh, that's so funny. He yeah. was what? You said 22 then, Ian? Uh, we were 21. It was 2012 before we turned 22. So we were 21, yeah. Yeah. But he wasn't bodybuilding when I met him. He was like still, like Ian never really stopped, you know what I mean? But he wasn't, uh, he had, I think he had broken his arm or something. And he wasn't, he was like, I'm never competing again. But he was still like training like crazy and eating like a bodybuilder. Yeah. When, so did, weird when, when was it that he 21? broke his arm? Like the, the arm wrestling? I think it was 2012. I, I think it was probably like a month. Oh. I, th- I think he was in a sling the first time I saw him. He like came, I, I was at my girlfriend's house for a party or something and he showed up and he was in a sling. So it must have been like summer 2012. This like fat, like he's not fat, obviously. He was super, he was <laughs> jacked, but he was like so like blown up and he just like walked in the sling. He was just like... <laughs> <laughs> my boyfriend was there at the time and he was like fuck he's so big i really want to get big like him and i was like ew (laughs) (laughs) you you don't want to look like that (laughs) meanwhile he probably Ian was probably like 230 at that point yeah he probably was like no nowhere near he is today which is ridiculous to think about but i'm sure you appreciate you calling him fat (laughs) (laughs) Uh, he's snoring. He can't hear me. He'll never <laughs> listen to this. <laughs> this was back when he just wore like shitty oversized Popeye shirts and his moose knuckle jacket. Like all he wore was free uh, All Max Popeye shirts, sweatpants, and then if he was going to the bar, he'd wear jeans and a black V neck. That hasn't that hasn't that changed. hasn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> that hasn't changed at all. <laughs> Oh, I love him so much. <laughs> He's consistent. I have to love someone a lot to deal with style like that, though. <laughs> well, has his has his other style gotten better outside of going to, I guess, his jeans and black V-neck? <laughs> he still honestly just wears free shirts and pants that fit him. Well, yeah, he, it's he, tough. At this point, shirt, he doesn't fit into anything. Yeah, I said it's tough when your shirt has to be three X, four X, four X. If no. it's and if it's a nice brand 5x, which they don't make. Yeah, no. For for like actual nice clothes, they don't make clothes that big. No. He could probably wear like the urban streetwear shit because it's so oversized, but like he would look stupid. Yeah, then it doesn't look right. Yeah. Uh we got like a really cool baseball jersey. 
in, in at the Philadelphia airport that I like picked for him, and I was Is it like, Philly oh, jersey. Yeah, it's Phillies. It's like white with red stripes and like two red stars on it, and it just says Phillies. Phillies? Is that what it's Phillies. called? Yeah. Yeah. No, that that looks really good. I like it, but he hasn't worn it yet. I guess I mean, we're, quar- we're quarantined. We're quarantined. So. <laughs> I'm the wearer on the house. <laughs> I, mean, I don't it's... think he's up from his alarm showering and doing his hair. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's gonna be his new going out shirt <laughs> he gets dressed up somewhat nice though i remember i remember in vegas he got, he's wearing a black shirt and jeans i'm trying to think no what did he is that what he had when it went to like cheesecake factory i couldn't remember he's always got the nice gucci shoes though right that's what it was yeah he he has those loafers listen his i like his shoes his shoe swag is very good but that's yeah, that also the good. only thing that he doesn't have to like stress out about size for you know yeah yeah that's true that's true that's the one i have to stress about size for yeah but you think that it looks worse than it actually does yeah i know those new shoes that you got look so good and they're size 13 i can only wear them with high socks though you can only wear anything with high socks i can wear really low cut things without them is that because your calves are small or (laughs) my calves are big now they've grown my ankles are very little small, though. That is the very reason. Very long and small. That is the reason why you wear long socks, though. One hundred percent. Your tiny <laughs> little ankles. Yeah, I have really small, <laughs> long ankles, and my calf starts high. So I, I wish wear... I had small ankles. You don't. I wish I had calves. I mean, when I'm lean, I do, but when I'm fat, I feel like my like calves and my ankles just look like monstrous. <laughs> what? Hold fat on your ankle. <laughs> That's what it looks like. <laughs> you're crazy leah Audie talks to me, leah Audie talks to me about this all the time because she she's tiny but she has like big ankles and she's like if i could do a surgery that would change the shape of my ankles i would do it and i was like <laughs> yeah small ankles are nice not on guys <laughs> no not on guys you're right no <laughs> all right you want to wrap this up yeah. yeah, I think so. I don't know what we talked about, but it felt nice. <laughs> <It> felt nice. <laughs> I've been trading with this French guy, and he doesn't know when to say nice. Like he so is, he says like is nice or some weird stuff. So like think of the direct translation from French gentil. Yeah. Well, I always like say like oh say gentil to him, and he's like oh fuck like I don't know. So he it's, says nice as like good basically. Yeah, like sometimes it fits, but like he's like is this machine nice? I guess that kind of makes sense, but it's still the way he said it just doesn't sound right. I don't know. <laughs> sounds like it sounds like a time. Borat thing when he was like, "Yeah, it does. It sounds very yeah. foreign." Nice? Yeah. Oh, he's, he's nice. He's yes. Nice. <laughs> 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 he's French, so he's not from wherever the hell Borat's from. Kazakhstan. Yeah. Oh yeah, you remember that? <laughs> oh, I don't even think I've ever seen the movie, but I knew that. That's impressive. All right, <laughs> we'll wrap this up. No more rambling. We got through an episode, at least an hour of random talking. So, yeah, maybe next time, next week, they can tell us what they want us to talk about. Yeah, if anyone's made it this far in the podcast, <laughs> give us suggestions below what to talk about because we're running slow. We'll talk about anything. I haven't left the house. Most stuck in quarantine. Matt's probably stuck in the house too. You've been going to the gym more often, but maybe we can dive into stuff next week. So, comment below what you guys would like to hear. Mm -hmm. and we'll catch you in the next episode.